Amazing stories of someone who had morals Spoke gently, lifting compassion banners Never vacillated to say what's right His conviction in Islam was eternally bright Was eternally bright بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد My dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته and welcome to another episode from our series The Amazing Stories and today inshallah ta'ala we will be sharing together this beautiful hadith that was reported by Imam Muslim رحمه الله in which he said that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Bayna rajulun bifalatim min al-arb. There was a man that was walking on a land, a kind of deserted land. Fasami'a sawtan fi sahaba. Suddenly, he heard a voice from a cloud. There was a cloud in the sky. And he heard a voice coming from the cloud. Now I let you imagine how scary can that be? And how surprising can that be? You are walking in a deserted place. There's nothing and then suddenly you hear something coming, a voice coming from the cloud. Someone is speaking, saying what? Isqi hadiqa tafulan. Go rain. Go and start raining over the garden of such and such person. So the cloud is receiving an order with a voice from someone. And that someone must necessarily be an angel. As we will see in the rest of the hadith, inshaAllah ta'ala, it will become more obvious. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, فَتَنَحَّى ذَلِكَ السَّحَابِ So that cloud changed its direction. And then started moving towards a different place. فَأَفْرَغَ مَاءَهُ فِي حَرَّةٍ The cloud went all the way and it stopped over a very black ground, a very black area full of black rocks and started raining over it. So there was something about that specific place. فَإِذَا شَرْجَةٌ مِنْ تِلْكَ الشِّرَاجِ قَدْ اسْتَوْعَبَتْ ذَلِكَ الْمَاءَ كُلَّهِ He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, what happened? It started raining over that place, and then the water made a path to itself, and all the water was going towards the same direction. It was going somewhere. So this is surprising. The man is surprised even more. Subhanallah, this is something really, that's amazing, that's ajib. The clouds are obeying an angel. So there's a voice that's saying something, so that's amazing. But you might say, oh, maybe it was someone that was speaking. But after that, you're like, no, 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 no. This is really something special. And out of the ordinary, because the cloud is obeying that voice. And us as Muslims, we believe, as the Prophet والسلام, informed us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created some angels that their specific mission is to do what? Is to direct the clouds. To take care of the clouds. They tell the clouds where to go. According to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the angels. And that is something that we don't see but we believe in it. Again, some people might say, what are you speaking about? Science explains how the clouds move. But we say yes, but science can never explain all of the details. Why did the air change its direction at this specific moment, at this specific place, and so on. And if science could really explain all of the details, we would not have so many mistakes that we see sometimes in the weather. The weather forecast. The weather forecast gives us a lot of information, but in probably 40 or 30% of the cases, the information is not precise. And that's not because they're not doing their best, but it's because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the exact future. So it shows to us also that sometimes a human being might be able to listen to the voice of an angel. 
if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to have this ability, why? For a wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Like here in this situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to take a lesson, to learn something. He said alayhi salatu was salam, فَتَتَبَّعَ الْمَاءَ So the man starting, started running after the water and following the water to see where is it going. He's very curious what's happening here. فَإِذَا رَجُلٌ قَائِمٌ فِي حَدِيقَتِهِ يُحَوِّلُ الْمَاءَ بِمِسْحَاتِهِ And then suddenly he saw a man. The first man that he saw, he was sitting or standing in that garden, that specific garden, and he was bringing the water inside his garden. So the water was coming from the cloud, raining, and then it made its own path towards the garden of that man. And the man was waiting for the water and pushing the water inside the cloud or inside the garden to make sure all of the garden gets the water and we will be able to uh, give a lot of fruits after that and to be a successful business for him. So this is a risk that's very easy. That's a wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending him with no efforts at all, something coming to him. Imagine someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the karama that a cloud would actually go specifically for him just for the sake of giving water for his garden. What is so specific about this man? He told him, Ya Abdullah, Masmuka. He said, O oh, servant of Allah, what's your name? قَالَ فُلَانْ لِلْإِسْمِ الَّذِي سَمِعَ فِي السَّحَابَةِ He said, I am such and such person. This is my name. And subhanAllah, it was the same name that he heard from the cloud. When the cloud was ordered to go to the garden of such and such person, it was the same name that was mentioned in the cloud. فَقَالَ له, يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ The man from the garden, after that he was surprised. Why is this man concerned about my name? Why does he want to know my name? He said, لِمَ تَسْأَلُونِ عَنْ اسْمِي Why are you asking me about my name? He said, or before going in what he said, we can take from that as a lesson also. That we can use, to call someone, we can use the title Abdullah, the servant of Allah. Because we are all servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you don't know someone, a Muslim, you can call him, Oh Abdullah, I want to know such and such thing. And we are all ibadullah, we are all servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether we accept it, taw'an, someone who is practicing, who is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but even those who are not obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even those who don't even believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are servants and slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what. Qahran, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ abda that all of them, all of the humans will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment as slaves and as servants. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls one of his servants to him, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him to death and to join the hereafter, no one will be able to disobey. This is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or we can take also from this hadith, my dear brothers, and sisters, a very precise hukm and a very precise jam, which is that we should always check the information again. Never jump to conclusions too fast. Why? Because this man could have arrived and right away with his emotions you could have said, Wow, mashallah, you're the man that was mentioned to the cloud? No. He didn't go that far yet. Although that he saw the man, the water was going to that man, he asked him about his name to make sure it was the same information that was said when he heard it before that. فقال, he told him, as for the reason why I want to know your name, let me tell you. He said, let me tell you. إني سمعت صوتا, I have heard a voice in the clouds. في السحاب, الذي هذا, الذي هذا ماؤه. He said, I heard a voice talking to the cloud that brought you this water, that rained on your area. Yaqul, this voice was saying, Isqi hadiqata fulan. Give water and start raining 
over the garden of this person. Lismika, and they mentioned your name. That's amazing. فَمَا تَصْنَعُ فِيهَا He said, please tell me what do you do in your garden? I want to know. We can take from this, my dear brothers and sisters, as a lesson that it is good and it is encouraged to give glad tidings to the believers. To give them the glad tidings. When we know that there is something good about a person, we say it to them. To encourage them. Because he told him, he could have hid the information, but he came to him and he said, look, there's something special about you. Somebody is calling for you to get water. Somebody is calling for you to get water. So that that man feels happy and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, my dear brothers and sisters, we can take as a lesson that we should ask when we see that someone is successful, is having good things, good blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should look and search for what's behind it. What is it that they are doing? Which good actions they are doing that are bringing this good to them? And these blessings to them. And this is why he told him, he didn't just tell him, wow, you're amazing. I heard a voice from the clouds calling your name and saying to come and to bring you the water. No, he said at the same time, what do you do? Tell me the secret behind. He wants to learn. So that man, he said, أَمَّا إِذَا قُلْتَ هَذَا Since you have mentioned that, let me tell you. فَإِنِّي أَنظُرُ إِلَى مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا Every time I make my calculations and I look at the things that come out from my garden, all the fruits and all the money, all the profit I make out of my garden, my work in my garden, what do I do with it? I share it in three budgets, three different parts that go to different destinations. What are these parts or what are those parts? Let us explain that in details right after the break. Stay with us insha'Allah ta'ala and we will meet you again in a short moment. This conviction in Islam was eternally bright, was eternally bright. In your standpoint of view, are there specific or certain criteria to choose your spouse or a partner to marry or not to marry? Maybe that's the question. Do we revise the quality of performance of our treatment between the family members as fathers or mothers? As they say usually, it's not what you say, it's how would you say it. Wouldn't you like to be a good storyteller for your kids? Neurobiologically speaking, child abuse and emotional trauma causes scars in the brain of the child and this might be not easily healing. What's the exact job description of a father? Is it clothing, payments, and feeding, or other important things? Well, I think the job description of a father is merely giving him love and care, self-confidence, giving him sense of security, and checking for the points of strength to strengthen them. What about potty training and its planning? Oh yeah, actually, it's a state, it's a condition. Fatherhood is not a body or a person, it's a state. Are you a good or skillful designer for the policy and the long-term plans of your, the life of your kids? Join us every Wednesday for Family Issues. Conviction in Islam was eternally bright, was eternally Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh My dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome back to our show And we are still talking and reflecting Upon the story of this man That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sent him a cloud With an angel calling his name His specific name saying O oh cloud Go to this man and make or start reigning over his garden. So what was very specific about this man? He said to the man that came to ask him about the issue, فَإِنِّي أَنظُرُ إِلَى مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا 
every time I look at the profits that I make from this garden, فَأَتَصَدَّقُ بِثُلُثِهِ I give one third of it as a charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَآكُلُ أَنَا وَعْيَالِي ثُلُثَهِ And one third of it, I keep it for myself and for my family. We eat from it. We eat from it. We use it for our needs. And at the same time, وَأَرُدُّ فِيهَا ثُلُثَهِ And I take the last third of it and I put it back as an investment in my garden. I invest in buying more seeds and everything so that it will be more productive in the future. Look how wise, how smart of a Muslim businessman this is. This is an example for every Muslim businessman who wants to be the ideal businessman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is pleased with. First of all, we can take from this hadith, my dear brothers and sisters, the permission and the permissibility of speaking about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with some things, we can speak about it to other people as long as our intention is not to be proud and to show some sort of pride or arrogance. If it's to let other people know about how happy we are about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's completely correct as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ And some part of the blessings is the good actions. Like this man did. He was asked, what are your good actions that are leading you to this amazing karamah, this amazing almost miracle that's coming to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, I'm giving sadaqah. So we can tell people about our good deeds in some situations if our intention is not to show off, but to teach them and to encourage them to do the same as what we are doing currently. And the main lesson of it, of course, and the most obvious, is that sadaqah, charity, is a great barakah, is of a great benefit to us in the hereafter, but not only that, in this life as well. When we give sadaqah, my dear brothers and sisters, it actually increases our wealth. We think it's decreasing the wealth, it is actually increasing our wealth by the will and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى وَيُرْبِدْ sadaqat." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those who use riba as a business. Riba is interest. So some people, they have a lot of money. They say, me, I don't need to work anymore. I'm going to put all of my money in a bank account and just get interest. They will give me interest every month and that will keep increasing my wealth, increasing my money. I don't need to work. Or I don't need to do business anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ riba." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys the riba. Sooner or later, it is one of the major sins. bis sadaqat, And contrary, the same word of riba, which means increasing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it for sadaqat, for charity. He says, He increases sadaqat. He puts barakah in sadaqat. Meaning, when we do a sadaqah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase our reward in the akhirah and will increase our wealth in this dunya. So sadaqah is the actual halal interest. The halal interest thing, an alternative that we have for riba. If somebody has a lot of wealth, he wants it to grow and to become even bigger. With a very minor effort, what he should do is give sadaqah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the verse, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ Whatever you spend for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it back to you. And you will get even more. And the Prophet ﷺ used to make an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, he makes an oath, although he knows that we believe him ﷺ. He used to say, مَا نَقَصَصْ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٌ No money will ever decrease because of sadaqah. 
We think that it's decreasing in our bank account. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is replacing the same amount and more of that from a different place. That we do not even feel or expect. Sometimes you give sadaqah for the sake of Allah. You give 40 dollars or pounds or anything that's relevant to your currency in the location in which you are. And you think you lost it, but you didn't lose it. Because if you did not give that sadaqah, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have tested you that your glasses are going to get broken today. And you will have to replace them with new glasses and it will cost you 300 or 400 or anything like that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from that. From getting a ticket, a fee, a fine for going over speed or anything like that. So sadaqah increases the money, it does not decrease it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that. At the same time, we see also this man that he's very wise. He understood the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only about giving sadaqah to those who are poor. No, it is only about caring or it is also about caring about our families and our relatives. Because he used to put his money for the people who were close to him, to his family. And the Prophet ﷺ told us, Ibda bi nafsika wa bi man ta'ul. Start first with yourself and with those that you are in charge of. Your wife, your kids. In Islam, it's haram. If your wife needs money to be able to eat or for medication or any other need or necessity and you don't have a lot of money, it's haram to go and give it to someone who is needy and not to your wife. Because the obligation first is to take care of the wife and the kids and yourself and then you move on to outside. Because if everybody does that and worries first about their own problem inside, obviously it will be more organized and the problems will be solved. But if I come and worry about other problems before my problems, and the other one does the same thing and everything, we will forget about the inside and we will take care of the outside and it will not build a successful society. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also, وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Do not ever forget your part from this dunya, from this life. Meaning, we give for our akhirah, but at the same time we keep our part also for this dunya. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, وَإِنَّ لِأَهْلِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقٍ In the hadith, the long hadith, when the Prophet والسلام, he gave this advice to one of the companions, he told him, yes, it's very good that you are given the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, however, do not forget that your nafs, your person, yourself, it has a right on you, and your family has a right on you, and so on. We have to be balanced in life, and this man is given us a beautiful example of balance how to be a balanced Muslim that takes care of the different rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to fulfill. And knowing that sadaqah is so important and that sadaqah increases the wealth, what is very beautiful is that he did not forget about taking the means, taking the necessary measures. We have said that in other Stories, and we are saying it again, my dear brothers and sisters. This man, he could have said, Oh, I'm giving sadaqah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase my wealth. That's it. And I stay on my chair and I wait for the wealth to be increased. No, he actually took the measures. He takes one third of his money and he puts it back as an investment. He continues to do business. He continues to invest his money. He's not going to eat all of the money that he gets and then after that he remains as poor. And again, it is only... And only after we have put the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put the barakah and the blessing and the help. And we have seen that in the story of the man who killed a hundred souls. He had to take action and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the land become closer to him and made him closer to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, we can give charity, but we have to take the measures. We have to find job, we have to do business, anything like that, anything that's halal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the sadaqah and the charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put blessing in our actions and in our business and our work after that. And at the same time, my dear brothers and sisters, He gives us the example of the Muslims who knows how to do budgeting, who is organized. A Muslim should always be organized and we have to learn to be organized to the best of our ability. Fortunately, our society, Muslim societies, nowadays, 
most of them are very disorganized even compared to the non-Muslim societies. Talk not about the companions and the other great people of they were, that were with the Prophet ﷺ. Why is that? Because it came from our cultures and we made it seem as if this is our religion and this is our way of life and we have to, to be like this. That we just work as the days pass by. No, this man he was organized. He had a budget, he had a rule. One third for this, one third for this, one third for this. Meaning he was actually following up with his money and following up with his affairs. And last but not least, my dear brothers and sisters, it shows us also that this man did not eat all of the money that he received. Some of us sometimes we get, we earn money, we earn halal money, but we take that money and we just spend it on things that might be halal, but that will take away all the money from us. We don't keep anything for our future, for our investment. While Muslims have to invest, especially nowadays, it is unfortunate that in Muslim countries, we bring everything from outside. We import everything from outside. Even the paper, the pen, the pencil has to come from China, has to come from other countries. Aren't we able to make the things ourselves? Why is that? In many cases, it's because only because people do not invest. People have learned to be consumers, not to be people who produce. They have the money, they consume with it whatever comes from outside. While in reality, Islam is teaching us to be self-sufficient, to take our money, to invest it, to produce, to make our own products, and to give to others instead of being people who only consume, because the one who only consumes sooner or later, he will start consuming the ideas and the faith and so many other things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the best of all the affairs. And this was the end of this very beautiful story. I invite you to make your own reflections and expand more on it. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll meet you in the next episode with a new story. So please be with us. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I love the Prophet who struggled so hard When his mission was just a start He held the hands of each companion On shame to play with little children With little children Amazing stories of someone who had morals Spoke gently, lifting compassion banners Never vacillated to say what's right His conviction in Islam was eternally bright Was eternally bright